Hey folks, Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization. I have a question for you. Should you train your abs? Oh, I'll wait. Go ahead. Do you have your answer yet? Oh, well, let's see if you're right. Here we go. Should you be training your abs? What a strange question, but I promise it's a real question. It's a decades old controversy. What gets you abs? And by abs, I mean visible abs, that moment when you pull your t-shirt off at the beach and that girl you've always liked but never really said much to you, she's like, ah, and you're like, hey, Karen, <laughs> she'll cancel you later. And she's like, oh my God, your abs, Scott. Uh, Scott's a video guy. What do you like? You're in this fantasy now. Enjoy. Mm. We all want this eventuality for ourselves. So how the fuck do we get abs? Well, is it diet? A lot of people say it is. Is it cardio? Doesn't cardio help to get abs? All the runners have abs. Is it supplements? For sure, all abs are made by Tren and Var and what other Reddit supplements do we know? Clen. Yes, that's just Tren and Var and Clen, bro. I don't know why, but every time I read ignorant Reddit comments about steroids from people who have clearly never used them, I give them an Eastern European accent. And I don't know, I'm also Eastern European, so I guess I can't possibly really offend anyone in that sort of way. But I find Eastern Europeans... Uh, to be generally awesome people, but every now and again, just really curt. Look up that word. Really brutal. But just say stuff and it sounds mean. And they're just being honest, but it comes off all wrong. So in any case, is it training? Should be, right? I mean, they train every other muscle. How do you get abs? You train your abs. Everyone knows that or do they? Now, if we say it's training, we can ask the next question of how does the training actually impact your abs? For example, does the training make them bigger and make them pop out more? Does the training make them more defined? Like, can you do a bunch of crunches and get more striations and separations in your abs? Maybe. Does it reduce the size of your midsection? A lot of people are like, oh man, I got a big old belly. I need to train abs. I wonder how that would work. You could be asking yourself quite rightly. And if you're going to train abs in order to get any of those above things, how would you do it? Because there's a lot of different type of ab training and well, Probably, if we're interested in any philosophy, not all of it can be equally effective, and we should be prepared for the eventuality that some of it could be very ineffective uh, altogether. Lots to unpack here. Let's get started. So first of all, how to get abs. Let's answer that first. First, first of all, you already won. Everyone, literally everyone, has abs already. The thing is, they are just covered by a small to medium to extremely large layer of body fat. That's the real problem. So if you reduce the fat that covers your abs, you will have abs, which means that the ultimate way to get abs and the by far most straightforward is to impose a calorie deficit that results from a combination of decreasing your dietary intake and potentially increasing your physical activity. That's abs. That's how come marathon runners have abs. Most of them don't train abs at all. They're really not even sure why the fuck they have abs but they do a crazy amount of physical activity and they can't possibly eat enough food to make up for it. So they stay at 6% body fat year round and they all have six packs. They're not doing planks or all this other bullshit. They're not in the gym training their abs. They're sure as hell not taking steroids to make their abs bigger. They have abs because they're so lean and that's it. So fundamentally getting abs can require zero ab training in almost every case. However, Sometimes, once you remove most of the fat from your midsection and your abs become visible, you realize that your abs are oh, so small. They are just tiny, tiny little abs, and that means not the muscles themselves are necessarily tiny, but they're just not very thick. So you could have this like more feminine looking midsection where someone's like, yeah, I guess you have abs, but they don't really pop. They're not gnarly. And that's a thing. But it's totally fixable with ab growth training. So at this point, we realize it's not a body fat issue. We're very lean. We can see low veins and we can see our abs, but they don't pop out as much. That is fixable with hypertrophy training for your ab musculature, which we'll talk about later how to do exactly. All right. Now, so that's how to get abs is primarily through, well, uh, creating a calorie deficit and getting lean. Training only modifies how your abs look. Everyone has them already. Here's what ab training will not do do for you. Get the myth slaying sword out, myth dragons flying up, cutting their heads off. You ever think like when a knight kills a dragon that the, the dragon has maybe like a family back home and a papa dragon and you killed 
mama dragon and she's flying around and you're a knight and everyone, you know, the princess gives you a blowjob, whatever else happens after you kill a dragon. And, and you're sitting all comfortable and pretty in the castle. And like, I did a good thing. And then, you know, it's getting pretty late and Papa Dragon back at the house is like, gee, Janice, the Mama Dragon's been gone for a long time. He starts to worry. The kids are like, oh, Papa, Papa, where is Mama? And they have the old 1930s little hat on and one of them has a peg leg, peg leg dragon. And you're, you're sitting in the castle all post blow job from the queen and a princess at the same time. That's right. This is an adult video. It's fucked up. You ever think about that shit? Mm -hmm. In any case, here's what ab training will not do for you. Will not. It will not spot reduce your fat. Right now, hold on, just connected to all other humans on earth. It's like Cerebro, but people always ask me, why the hell does your head look like that? No, it's not growth hormone abuse. I actually don't abuse hormone. I take it intelligently and I had a big head before I ever took it. But it is actually because I have a Cerebro from X-Men installed in my skull. And clearly it's bigger, so they had to make my head look funny. So I can actually connect with all people at the same time right now and find out what all of you're doing. Hey, hey, Jim. Stop jacking off. I see you doing that shit. All right. Back to everyone else. Right now, thousands of people, as I connect to the ultraverse, are doing millions of fucking crunches to try to burn the fat off of their abs. It doesn't work. The research on what's called spot reduction is does local activity of the muscle, does that activity burn the fat close to that muscle, shows us two things. One, it's very difficult to measure at that fine level of precision, so we're not really sure. But that already tells us how little of that is going on, that we can barely measure the shit. Some of the studies do show that there is a spot reduction effect, but it is so fucking teeny tiny, you would have to do kind of an infinity number of crunches in order to get your abs to show if you just didn't reduce your overall level of body fat. And because your overall level of body fat matters so much more, you can make it so much easier on yourself and just not do the fucking crunches at all and just do a calorie deficit. So if you're looking for spot reduction, if you are looking to get abs by just doing a million crunches, you are doing something that is some combination of, or some, uh, the truth of it is either just doesn't do anything at all to burn the local fat or it does so little, you'll never fucking notice. That sucks. Just don't do that. So if people say, oh man, I got to burn the fat off my abs. How do I do it? What's your answer to tell them in the break room at work? You go, just lose fat all over, lose 10 pounds and you'll see your abs better. They're like, but what about the abs themselves? Oh, fat will come off mostly of where you put the fat on. And if you have a lot of Android obesity, you put a lot of fat on your abs and upper body. When you do a calorie deficit, that's where it's going to come off of. It's amazing how that works. Second thing, training will not change the shape or symmetry of your abs. Some of us, we get abs, myself included, they're slightly misaligned. In my case, insanely misaligned. You say, fuck, how, could, how do I get them to align again so I have a cool little like a model six pack. That ship has fucking sailed for you. And unless we have in, intense genomic medicine in the next 10 to 15 years or insane reconstructive surgery, your abs are just going to look like they look except leaner or not leaner, bigger or not bigger. Lastly, this is a really big one tied into the first one of spot reduction. Training your abs does not make your waist any smaller. And as a matter of fact, if you make your abs really muscular, it makes your waist bigger. A lot of power lifters have big waists because they're putting a shitload of strain on their abs. And a lot of figure girls, for example, who come from gymnastics backgrounds have been doing tons of ab and oblique training you know, that they had to for gymnastics. And a lot of gymnastics moves require that anyway. When they reduce their gymnastics move involvement or stop training their obliques entirely, their waist actually shrank because the muscles on the side of your waist got smaller. There's no amount of training to those muscles to make them bigger that can make them smaller. Thus, if you want a smaller, shapelier, tinier little waist, training your abs has diddly dick to do with that. Am I pissed at you training abs? No, train away. Just understand what you're getting. And I'll tell you this, this is kind of a little mini tragedy, first world tragedy. Right now, again, connecting to the ultraverse, seeing what everyone's thinking and feeling. Jim, really, you're jacking off again. Back to everyone else. Folks, tons of people right now are training their abs for either spot reducing fat or for making their waist smaller. And sometimes even to change the shape and symmetry of their abs all at the same time. And those three things just don't fucking work. So stop doing them because you're probably not into doing shit that doesn't work or works really poorly. So just imposing a calorie deficit and not training your abs as much or hardly at all is probably a much better way to go for almost everyone. That's just the, that's just the reality of the matter. Now, if we do want to train abs, what will ab training actually do for us? First thing is if you train your abs for endurance, like with planks and a bunch of other stuff, it will make your abs more endurant. 
you will have better ab endurance. Why? I don't know why you would want more ab endurance. Maybe you cramp during sex or some shit like that. But anytime people are doing planks and stuff like that in the gym, they're just working on isometric ab endurance. Um, most people do planks in the gym because they just nominally understand that that trains their abs somehow. They probably think it spot reduces fat. And it's something the personal trainer or group fitness instructor told them to do. And they suffer through it and they get a little endorphin high and they feel like they've accomplished something. That's as deep as that thinking ever goes. People do not get ripped abs from doing fucking planks. Planks are cool for their own shit and for getting you in general uh, isometric ab endurance, but not much other than that. Second thing, training your abs, especially in a hypertrophic way, which we'll talk about lastly in just a bit, can make your abs physically bigger. That means they pop out more at higher body fats and really cool one, they pop through clothes. So if you're into the following look, you could train your abs for a long time to get them bigger. When you put on your uh, Under Armour, right? Some shit like that in the gym or in a locker room or whatever the fuck you wear that shit out on the street, maybe not. You guys know that like NFL, like running back look where they have the Under Armour on the combine and they're just relaxed, but you can see their abs popping through their fucking clothes. That looks sweet. And that exactly what everyone's into. I don't know how many girls are like, oh my God, his abs are popping out. Maybe some like it, maybe some don't. But at the end of the day, if you want that look, yeah, training your abs for growth will get you that look. Cool look. It's not the same as like a men's physique competitor uh, where in a shirt or in Under Armour, you wouldn't be able to tell that they have abs, but when they take them off, you're like, holy fuck, and their waist is really tiny. It's different because remember, NFL folks, they don't have super tiny waists, but they have big popping abs. It's a trade-off. Which one you want more, Right. So that's definitely a thing that you can get from ab training. And lastly, you can make your abs a lot stronger. If your abs are a limiting factor in your strength in some way, like for Brazilian jiu-jitsu or MMA or something, like uh, sitting up from guard, if you had stronger abs, you could do it faster and more, more forcefully, then training your abs for strength is totally a thing that works. But remember, having strong abs is not the same thing as having a ripped midsection. Currently, I don't have a ripped midsection. It's fine. I have abs and some veins in it. But it's not exactly the most ripped thing, but it's a big fucking midsection and it's strong as fuck, but nobody's shaking my hand for that shit. Like if I had more of a physique competitor waist, more people would pay attention to my abs, but I don't. And there's nothing I can do through training to get there. That's all diet. And at some point also fucking genetics. So lastly, if you're going to train your abs, how do you do it properly? Well, here's the thing. If you want bigger more exotic abs, did you train them normally like you train any other muscle group? And this must be one of the biggest myths and misconceptions in the fitness industry is people, when they train abs, they'll do like crunches where you hold your, I can't even do this. My arms are getting too big. Uh, this is hard to do. Literally biceps hitting forearms. Pretty sweet, right? The, the fucking hand behind your ears crunches. You do like three sets of 50. Like, can you imagine doing that in front of like Brad Schoenfeld, top hypertrophy researcher and be like, Hey, is three sets of 50 good for growth? He'd be like, not really. It's like, okay, is it good for fat burning? He's like, uh-uh. Like, okay, why am I doing this? Huh? You should have thought about that before you started doing the shit. But what I just described is like 90% of the ab training that occurs in the entire world. Most people do their ab training unresisted. If you wanted the biggest pecs of all time, would you just do push-ups? That's nonsense. But people who want their abs developed highly, they just do body weight ab stuff. That's fucking stupid. How do you train abs? What does that mean to train normally? Normally means like any other muscle group. So for example, you choose exercises that are high stimulus and a low level of fatigue. They don't bother your hips or your spine. You can get a good full range of motion out of them and it really burns the whole really fuck, uh, living fuck out of your abs. It gets them sore, all that other stuff. So first, second, you know, full range of motion for sets of five to 30 reps per set, standard loading rate, which means that after a while, you won't be able to use your body anymore. So you have to load it, which means you do reps in reserve three reps in reserve, then two reps in reserve, then one, then zero, then deload. Standard mesocycle progression. Don't go to failure every time. Like everyone seems to think is important with abs and you do load and rep progressions. So get on a really good full range of motion ab machine and start sets of 10 to 20. Add sets as you recover better, add load and add reps over time and your abs will grow. It's like every other muscle. Again, a lot of people say, oh, I train my abs every day or every time I train. Why? Do you train your biceps or quads every time you train? That's fucking stupid. You train a muscle hard, you rest for a while, and then you train it again. You can logically set up a program that trains them every day, and that might not be the answer. On average, generally, we recommend that you train every muscle between two and four times per week. So abs fall into two and four times per week. That means they're going to have a minimum effective volume, a maximum recoverable volume, all that stuff. 
It's the same as every other muscle group. The problem is almost nobody trains their abs the same as every other muscle group because ab training is just full of so much myth and bullshittery and dumbassery that it's hard to get to the actually uh, logically to what it is that we're trying to do. And if we're trying to elicit hypertrophy, why wouldn't we do that the same way we do with every other muscle, right? If you want a real good guidance on what that other mean, that stuff means, there's an ab hypertrophy guide. Just type that in or type in central hub hypertrophy guide abs RP into your Google machine. And then voila, there's a whole article about how to train abs, periodization, progression, exercises, rep ranges, all that stuff. Just like every other muscle with its own little quirks. But fundamentally, it's just growth training. It's something you're already very familiar with doing. So when someone asks you, how do you train abs? Think about how you train your side delts or your biceps or your calves. And like that's damn near the same shit. Just the exercises are different. Number two, if you want stronger abs, drum roll. Scott, the video guy, can you do a drum roll uh, sound for me here? Train them for sets of three to six repetitions with heavy loading. What? But that's strength training. Your abs are fucking muscle. You train them for strength, you can train everything else for strength. Whoa, geez, isn't six, three to six reps like really low for the abs? Uh-huh. Did You said you wanted strength, right? You didn't say you wanted to arbitrarily do sets of 10 to 20. All right, train them for strength, you train them for strength. That's just how it works. Now, all of a sudden, you might not be interested in training your abs for strength, and that looks really painful. But that's just that's what we're talking about. Third, sport endurance. If you want your abs to be more endurant for sport, I would say try sport-specific stuff first. Okay, so exercises that mimic your sport, at least to some extent, are probably really good for sport endurance stuff. So, for example, if you're training your abs for endurance in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you can do some planks and stuff like that. But what you can also do is you say, okay, where is my ab endurance really giving up? Well, when I'm sort of crouched and sitting in guard, my shoulders are not laying back because I don't just want to get past. I'm up with my hands like this. You're basically sitting on your butt. Your feet are either on the ground, your feet are up. You're only sitting on your butt, your shoulders are off the ground, and you have to sit in this curled up posture. And at some point after two minutes of trying to prevent guard passes, you're like, ah, I can't do this. My abs are tired. Well, guess what? In your ab training, if you want to train for endurance, after all the rolling and training has been done for the day or some other day of the week, take like some kind of weight or put on a weight vest or take a like some kind of dumbbell, put it right here, curl up and sit there for as long as you can for like a typical roll amount and then increase the weight on the uh, with a dumbbell or increase the amount of time you can sit in that crunch position, even pretend to move a little bit every now and again, and your ab endurance will come up in a sport specific way in that position that you want it. Yes, training it in different positions like plates, et cetera, will raise your general ab endurance, but you probably want a little bit more specific ab endurance because that actually replicates what you're doing in the sport. You don't want to replicate it exactly, but something more like that, right? And then lastly, if you want to get your abs crisp, if you want to get them to show if you want random women to come up to you in the street and be like, excuse me, sir, I don't even mean to bother you. I know you're with your friends right now and you're probably on to do very important things, but can I just take the time to just squirt chocolate on your abs and lick them off like a fucking pathetic animal that I am? Because when I see a man's abs like that, I get weak in the knees and I have to lick. If you want that sort of thing to happen to you daily, then calorie deficit, oh, and calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit, sign me out. See you guys next time.